I'm a low-level US government employee. I just saw something I wasn't supposed to see. You know that meme about how presidents and governors after getting elected look super shell-shocked and stressed the next time they make a public appearance? Like the first thing that happens after you come into power is that you're pulled into a room and told all the secrets of the world. Well, it turns out it's true. As a matter of fact, it's a VHS tape. The four hour tape was always a bit of an urban legend at the office. I'll be keeping the details of my role in government very, very vague, but to be absolutely clear with you, I'm very low level. My role is caked between layers of bureaucracy and in the grand scheme of things, it's a pretty inconsequential role. When you're working at my level, you're generally not privy to any high level secrets. Yes, top secret meetings did occasionally occur in our building, but my focus is pretty limited and heavily administrative. So you do what any other department does when you're in the bottom rung of the hierarchy. You discuss rumors, rumblings, crazy conspiracy theories, and everything in between. It's water cooler conversation for us. Man, I wonder what the folks at the top are doing right now. That kind of stuff. Out of all the rumors that fluttered around the office, the four-hour tape was always the one that I found the most fascinating. The crux of it, once you reached the highest clearance level, you were sat down and shown this tape. None of us knew what the contents of the tape were, or if a tape like this actually even existed. But it was fun to speculate about it every now and then. Most of the time, we found with our little rumors and conspiracy theories that, most, that the most mundane answer was usually the correct one. Life in general finds a way to surprise us with how boring everything can be. Now there's something you should know about me before I continue. I'm a wimp. I'm a meek, anxious, and generally restless. I'm a chronic rule follower, and there's really no part of me that wants to dig up secret documents and uncover the truth about what happens at the highest levels of the government in our country. So when I discussed the events of four nights ago, please be mindful that I didn't ask for this, and I'm only sharing because I don't know how much time I have left anyways, and I can't live with this stuck in my conscience. It was a nighttime at the office. I'm known to be a bit of a chronic workaholic, and there was something I really wanted to get done before this week was over. So I was working later than usual. I went to print a document on what I thought was the printer in my immediate vicinity, the notification on my computer showed that my document was being printed, but I didn't really hear any noise or paper coming out from my local printer. I checked the name of the device I selected, and it looked like I'd accidentally clicked on a printer that was being used on another floor. I sighed. In any normal circumstance, I probably would have just forgotten about that mistake and reprinted the documents on my local printer again, but... Our general manager here is quite stringent on us making sure that all confidential documents are accounted for. We are not allowed to share department-specific documentation with other departments. I looked up a map in my inbox showing the locations of all the company printers. Turns out I'd accidentally clicked on the printer named Prince Charming on the 7th floor. Ha, funny name. I really should have just let it be. I got to the elevator and rode up to the 7th floor. I merged onto the mostly empty office area. In case you're wondering, the building I work in is huge, but I'd worked there long enough to know my way around it. So I knew the area surrounding the printer relatively well. I made my way through the hallways and eventually spotted the printer with my freshly printed papers minting it. I gave myself a mental pat on the back for continuing my lifelong streak of following the rules. As I went to grab the papers, I noticed some light buzz in a meeting room nearby. I looked through the windows to see roughly 10 people hanging out around a snack table. In the room was a large old looking TV on a cart and tons of rows of some of the fanciest folding chairs I'd ever seen, organized in a neat fashion. I didn't think much of it and started walking off until I heard the door open. Hey Mr. Boriski, right? Jesus man, we were supposed to start 15 minutes ago. Get in here. I, uh, what? No, sorry, I think you have the wrong- I don't care why you're late, just get in here, grab a plate of snacks and sit down. We're starting soon. Put your phone in the bag, electronic watch in the bag, and anything else on your person that can be used to record audio or video, he responded hastily. Something about his sternness and tone short-circuited my brain. For guys like me, there's a third option beyond fight or flight. It's called just go with it until it's over, also known as the captured rabbit strategy. I put my phone and watch in the bag, and I meekly tried to butt in with another. Sir, I'm not Mr. Boritsky, but he had already pulled me into the room at this point. 
He closed the door and walked by to the front of the TV. I thought about making a break for it, but I decided to see it through at this point, hoping deep down that whatever was happening was as inconsequential as my job was. Everyone had their snack plates and were heading to their seats. I awkwardly grabbed a muffin from the side table, put it on a napkin, and took a seat in the very back row. Everyone was spaced out from each other. It didn't seem like any of these folks knew one another. I quietly sighed at the thought of having to sit through some sort of boring informational seminar or irrelevant training session. After a few minutes of everyone settling in, the man who originally brought me into the room started talking. There was an equally serious guy standing next to him and a secret service looking fella standing in the corner. Huh? I started wondering to myself why we were going to watch a video off a very old school looking TV. It felt like I was back in elementary school or something. Alright, I need you to do a final run through before we get started, the man at the front said. I know you all read through the emails and signed your releases, I just wanted to recap some ground rules. You are allowed to get up and grab another snack, but beyond that we want you to pay full attention to the tape once it starts playing. If any of you need to go to the bathroom, we strongly urge you to wait until the presentation is over. If you absolutely have to go, we will pause the tape and one of us will escort you there. There's water in the corner by the snacks, cups are right there as well, and uh, goes without saying, but any discussion of the presentation to folks who do not have top compartment and clearance is a breach of your terms of employment, a breach of your non-disclosure agreement, a breach of your multiple sign releases, a breach of the US criminal code in the state redacted and a breach of the conditions laid out by the Committee for the Protection and Preservation of Human Consciousness. They started dimming lights. Fuck. It felt like I had missed any window of opportunity I had to leave. Too late. That committee name he highlighted sounded way above my clearance level. One of the men at the front of the room pulled out a VHS tape from a bag and very slowly and securely put it into the VHS player. He pressed play. I took a deep breath. Those water cooler conversations I'd had with my coworkers were starting to float to the top of my mind, but I quelled them. There was probably no need for panic, it was just a stupid government meeting, right? The tape started. The beginning was familiar enough. Various disclaimers about being incredibly confidential material, yada yada yada, in signs of relevant organizations. Presidential libraries, I'd seen a lot of videos like this already. But wait, the insignia looked strange, like something was off with it. I scanned it. Presidential libraries, that same eagle, those same stars? Weird. This time there was a navy blue hand on the left shoulder of the eagle. Did they update the logo? Before I had time to ruminate on it too much, the tape cut to a logo I had actually never seen before. Committee for the Protection and Preservation of Human Consciousness. The logo was just an image of planet Earth, fair enough. The video cut to a room that looked similar to the congress floor but with some strange differences. The seats were much more spaced off, the podium looked like it had seen better days, and the whole room just looked to be on a pretty steep incline. Everything was in black and white, and it looked like there were about 50 people in attendance. It was hard to make out the faces though. Everything looked very detailed, like the video was from the 40s or the 50s. The tape lingered onto this one shot for a while, minutes passed. I noticed what looked to be a choir, all in outfit and perfectly huddled next to each other, standing in one of the corners of the rooms. It really felt like I shouldn't have been seeing this, none of this was meant for my eyes. After a few more minutes, the tape abruptly cut to an awkward angle video of a man speaking at the podium in the room. It was too zoomed in, enough that you couldn't see his eyes or his hair. It didn't look all that professional. I couldn't even tell who he was. He spoke. Members of the Committee for the Protection and Preservation of Human Consciousness, I thank you all for coming tonight. We are lucky to be in the good graces of our visitors today, without rehashing our painful history. The tape cut to a camera slowly panning over all the faces. The folks seated in the room. The attendees looked pained, somber. The man continued his speech as the camera continued panning over the committee. We can acknowledge that the journey to this moment has been an audacious one. I am pleased to say that humanity, faced with a dire ultimatum, has come to a majority decision. To our esteemed guests from across the solar system, we are thankful for the opportunity you have given us to negotiate with you. I felt adrenaline. Fuck. We had made contact with extraterrestrial life. This was the truth. 
Maybe like the saying went, the truth would set me free. Before I outline the decision made by humanity, I want to, from the bottom of my heart, thank the brilliant representatives from all of the nations of the world who came together to ensure that this decision was taken with the utmost responsibility, care, and appreciation for our human species. I am aware that this was not a unanimous decision. Shit, what did that mean? I felt the sweat on my brow. I felt nausea coming in. I awkwardly and slowly took a bite of the muffin. Tape returned to a now corrected angle of the speaker at the podium. His eyes were visible, they looked strained, like they'd seen multiple visions of hell. To the nations who still disagree, he continued, I thank you nonetheless for accepting the majority decision. May this moment, which will be held in secrecy throughout the rest of time, be appreciated as a critical milestone for the human civilization. Tonight is not a victory. It is a somber moment. However, we were faced with two options extinction or accepting the agreement we made our choice and i believe time will show that this was the right decision what what was the right decision i hereby announce that we accept the agreement provided by our special guests who have chosen to go by the name redacted the intergalactical species known as redacted will allow humanity on planet earth to continue to populate grow and innovate in return all governments of the world will honor the promise he needed to spit it out. What the fuck was this agreement? We will not be covering every element of the agreement in this session. I will, however, highlight the main points. At this point, the video showed the man at the podium looking down. He was reading off of something. For the first time, he looked nervous, scared. I saw some humanity in him. We honor the agreement that Redacted will hold the right to visit planet Earth on a recurring basis. They will be allowed to consume, for the basis of nourishment, a majority of the human population on planet Earth. After every visit, the remaining humans on Earth will be expected to breed and grow to capacity in time for the next visit. We acknowledge that we will need to maintain a parallel history which will be shared with our world's population to ensure humanity stays motivated to continue existing as a species. This parallel history may suggest that mass extinction events are the results of man-made folly as opposed to the work of external forces. For the first time, my fight or flight response was actually flight. I wanted to escape, but I didn't know what I'd even be running from. The last visit by Redacted was approximately in the year 1346, and it lasted seven years. We will continue to honor our parallel history about this event. I just want the video to end. The next visit, which will not be met with resistance, will be in the year 2028, and will run for one full calendar year on Earth marking a 675 year gap between the last significant visit by the species known as redacted. This visiting cadence is expected to speed up over time as the remaining humans continue to sharpen their focus on building technology to allow humanity to reproduce in a speedy and productive manner. Jesus Christ, our planet is a fucking farm. I wanted to look away but I couldn't. The tape cut away to a larger view of the congress-like room. The somber committee, members in attendance, and the members of the choir in the corner, who I could only imagine looked horrified. Where were the visitors? Why couldn't I see them? The camera then panned to a large number of empty seats, the same slow style of video panning as the one that happened earlier with the committee members. No visible entities in the seat, but the seats themselves looked blurry. The man at the podium carried on with his speech as the camera panned on those blurry seats continued. We should acknowledge the privilege of knowing that there is indeed life in the cosmos, that extraterrestrial life has chosen to visit our planet, and that the cycle and balance provided by nature extends beyond the confines of planet Earth. Much like humanity has found this place on Earth in the food chain, we acknowledge our place in the divine order of things when encountered with beings of greater power, understanding, cognitive function, and evolutionary progression. Fucking hell, I shouldn't have stayed at work late. I should have made my identity clear from the very beginning. I knew that I wasn't supposed to see this. And while, fuck, it really looked like the speaker was about to cry. While the process of consumption is a painful and lengthy one, we respect the trade-off that comes with the preservation of our species. We also acknowledge as a part of that promise that substitutes for human life in the form of clones. Should we discover that technology in the future, or other living species, will never function as alternatives for nourishment, the speaker continued. I didn't need to know this. This whole thing was way too specific for me. <coughs> 
Our final acknowledgement as part of this agreement is that we accept Redacted as the Great Almighty, as the entities we now refer to as God. God, as an interstellar species, has revealed itself to us, and thus, the continued existence of Redacted is now the true priority of the people of our planet. We are blessed to play a part in the continuation of God. In God we trust. Amen. The tape then cut to the footage of the choir as the speaker continued. We bless our visitors with this gift. A performance of the national anthems of all major nations of the world will now commence. Audio of a very loud backing track of the Star Spangled Banner started playing from the video as my stomach sank. The tape showed footage of the choir singing on top of the track. Not sure if it was because they were scared for their lives, but I could really tell they were singing their hearts out. As they sang, the camera continued to pan over the blurry seats. They finished singing the anthem, and suddenly, fast forwarding, fucking hell, I forgot I was sitting in a room. I disengaged from the video for a brief moment. I had mentally returned to the present day. This was our world. The men at the front continued fast forwarding through the tape. It looked like they were skipping through the performances of every other national anthems. The fast forwarding went on for a while. Every small while, it looked like the new choir group was entering the congress room to sing a different national anthem. On and on the tape went. I had to fight the urge to pass out. One of the men at the front of the room standing next to the TV started speaking. We are legally obligated to get to the end of this tape, but you don't need to look at the rest of it. Please feel free to look down or close your eyes or grab a snack, he said. I noticed the others seated in the room were taking that advice. Most of them decided to look straight down. For some rude reason, I couldn't look away. The fast forwarding progressed on the tape. It was yet another choir group joining to perform at the anthem, and then another. It looked like we were near the end. The fast forwarding progressed on the tape. It was yet another choir group joining to perform an anthem, and then another, and then another. It looked like we were near the end of the tape. The fast forwarding now showed a conversation between the man at the podium and another man who was whispering in his ear. The man at the podium was vehemently shaking his head, and the other man continued whispering. This continued on. Eventually, there was a quick moment of the man at the podium nodding. The last few fast forwarded moments in the tape remained burned into my memory to this very moment. There were pandemonium. The attendees were sitting in their chairs, frozen, shivering, crying, but the people in the various choirs were running around the rooms in fast motion. As blurry spots started covering them, and ungodly things started happening to them. Fuck. Why didn't I look away? If there was ever a fucking time to follow orders, I felt like this whole thing went on for longer than it should have. Finally, the men at the front of our room stopped the fast forwarding. They pressed play on the tape to cover the final moment. In this tape, the man at the podium clearly, emotionally, spoke his final line. The agreement has been ratified by Redacted. Thank you all for attending. The final shot of the room is the full room, the committee members in their seats, shivering and crying, the dismantled and bloody choir members strewn about the room, the blurry seats with blood smeared on them. The video then cut away, back to the same insignia on a backdrop, the presidential libraries, that eagle, those stars, and the navy blue hand on the wing of the eagle. The lights in the room turned on, and the rest of the night was a blur. The men at the front of the room told us it was best for us to sit for an hour to digest the information. No discussion about the video was allowed to take place. When we were ready to stand, we were allowed to leave and go home. They gave us some pointers on how to accept the information over the coming weeks. Things like taking long walks, exercising, watching a sitcom. I wasn't worried about them realizing I wasn't supposed to be there. If anything, I felt a strange camaraderie with everyone in the room. We all truly were in the same boat. As soon as I left the building and got in my car, I just drove, for as long as I could. I would stop for gas, then I'd keep driving. I'd stop again, then I'd keep driving, again and again. I'm holed up in a hotel now. I'm just glad I could get this off my chest. The funny thing is, all I can think about was the length of that stupid tape. While I can't confirm, I feel like if it were played straight through without fast forwarding, it would have only been three hours. I wonder if the four hour tape rumor came from the fact that we all needed an extra hour to digest the information. And now you're probably wondering, why don't I name the species that is going to spell humanity's doom throughout the rest of time? Why am I calling them redacted? Well, as the self-appointed leader of the committee for the acknowledgement that we should have just chosen extinction, I don't feel the need to honor our captors by calling them by their name. If I don't see you again, Reddit, I appreciate the water cooler conversation. 
Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe, and have a good rest of your day. Thank you.